it's the one. Just the, no, you guys good? Okay, that's fine. I like sitting in the dark. All right, uh, did it start recording? Oh, it is recording. Sweet. Um, okay, is it really recording? It is recording, yay. All right, um, so um, I've just got these two sections done. I don't, I don't think I did. Did I do stuff on the inside? Oh yeah, we set up that um, content column. So the sections again uh, were to have that color go all the way across. Um, the next container um, in that that tree uh, was our content because everything should line up and, and exist inside this like you know I think sixty percent of that that width of the browser window. Um, and then the stuff that we're actually showing is inside there. So um, I made two little. Uh, divs that have an h3 which is like a heading you know it looks just like a bold text and then some default paragraph text um, all of these elements have some of their own styling that comes with them margin and padding we talked about that on Tuesday we're going to talk more about it today um, I made one I copied it and pasted it in there this one has all my images we talked about the fluid image um, you just have to have an image inside of a container that image needs to be 100% of the container's width, and then you just tell the container to be whatever width you want it to be. Um, we're going to line these up horizontally so that they're equal, equally spaced across. Um, OK, then um, I think in here I'll just do some content real quick. So maybe uh, you know, I'll just copy, copy this one. Collapse it so it's easier to see. I'm not copying an image. Uh, now it... You'll notice I'm putting it, you know, um, it's a sibling. This image is a sibling of this about me div here. All right. Um, so it needs to be, got to make sure that you're putting it after that closing tag uh, for that, that element. Or that of that that container. Um, otherwise, it's going to be inside of that about me. And that's going to mess things up. Um, all right, I'm just going to do those three <laughs> sections for now. You will be doing five. Okay. Um, for now, this is good. Let's uh, let's do some styling. Um, we need to get rid of that user agent style sheet stuff. The extra padding that's showing up here on these edges. Um, so it's essentially I do resets. I was talking about that on Tuesday, but um, we're going to reset some stuff on the body tag. Uh, a little bigger. Let's adjust my windows here. Okay. Um, so with CSS again, as a refresher, uh, you're just you're. Um, oh God, I always forget the term. Declarations. Yeah, declarations. Hey Maggie. Hi, sorry. So uh, the Wikipedia article is actually a pretty good place to, to look at for this stuff. Um, with CSS, the structure of the CSS is this first thing that you're targeting, this thing that you want to set uh, rules for, styling rules, is called a selector. Okay, selectors can be element names, uh, class names, and ID names. Okay, or they can be a string of them. So you can like you can give essentially a path down. Um, if you wanted to go through a parent, uh, all the parents down to a descendant. Um, I, I showed a little bit uh, how to do that on Tuesday. We'll do more of that today. Um, so that's a selector. This entire thing uh, is called a declaration block. Okay, It's just declaring the rules. This is where you declare the rules. Um, but inside of this is where you set your rules. So you do your selector, your target. You have your curly braces. Um, I talked about the differences between Square braces, curly braces, and angled braces. All right, these are all braces or brackets. Uh, they're just different kinds and they're used for different things. These are used for HTML elements. These are used for CSS declaration blocks. These aren't used. Okay, you don't use the squares. Um, all right, inside of the uh, the body element, we're going to reset padding to zero and margin to zero. This is padding and margin is how you add spacing to elements. Um, browsers by default do a little bit of it. We want to just take it off so that we don't have to worry about it and it's not arbitrarily affecting our design in some way. 
Uh, so we just reset it. Then we're going to just uh, work down like we did last time um, on Tuesday. Uh, I'm going to work sort of general to specific. I'm going to top to bottom, general to specific. Don't try to start writing CSS for stuff that's at the bottom of your HTML before you do the stuff at the top. Okay, Because HTML is top down. Right? Stuff at the top is going to affect where stuff on the bottom is or how it looks. So you got to think about that first. So the first section we're going to do is blue. Um, now there are multiple ways to target it, to select it. You could just write ID blue. Uh, hashtag is the symbol for an ID. Um, you could just do that. Uh, if you wanted to get really specific, you could get, you could put the element in there as well. That would be the same. Okay. Um, it's the same thing as writing that. It's just more specific. Sometimes just doing the ID can cause errors. Uh, if that ever happens, you can always just come in and stick the element name in there as well. Right? It's like that, um, you guys know on zip codes how that you have your five digit zip code, but then there's the extra four, right? It's like that extra four, extra four numbers. You guys have all seen that? It's like really, really specific. Um, or it's like doing the seconds on latitude and longitude. Um, if that makes sense. Anyway, all right, blue. Um, this one, we want to just say background color, uh, and we want it to be a certain kind of blue. Uh, using our color picker, command shift C, change the hex down there at the bottom, and just find a blue you like. Uh, that works. Um, I know I've mentioned it already, but I'm going to do it again. Uh, Hexadecimal is how we're going to express our colors. Uh, it's just the system used to express RGB colors. The first two digits, uh, it's alphanumeric, so it has characters as well, not just numbers. Um, so decimal is just numeric, hexadecimal is alphanumeric, alpha being characters. How did you get that, the little um, color thing to show up? Command shift C. If it doesn't work for you, you don't have the right plugin, the uh, color picker oh, plugin. No, I get it. Okay, rad. Um, so hexadecimal is denoted by a hash, and then six digits. All right, um, or six characters. First two characters are red, the second two characters are green, and the last two characters are blue, RGB. Red, green, blue. That's the color system we use for light, which our screens are made of light. So. Um, all CSS lines need to end in a semicolon. That tells the browser that the rule, we're done setting rules, and to go to the next rule, okay? All right, background color for that. Um, if we come back and reload oops, our page, hey, background color. It's essentially what we want right now. Uh, I'm going to come in and do my purple as well. Um, a note about autocomplete. So I'm not actually typing the whole thing out. I'll probably get away with that. I'm just, it's a fuzzy kind of search that happens with autocomplete. So if you just type in a bunch of characters that are in the word, not necessarily write out the word, it will auto, try to autofill. It tries to match all those characters. So I just write, you know, I wrote BACC, and that gives me all the options that have BACC. So it has a B, an A, and two Cs in it, which is giving me these four options. And it will try to sort it by the one you use most commonly, most frequently. Okay. So, get, what? Um, no, Do you have that? Is that showing up for you? Uh, the auto complete. The, the background. It's going, it's saying RGB parentheses 24 plus 15. Right. It's not giving you a hex. Oh, because um, when you open this up, yep. you need to go down here to the bottom and click on hex. It automatically opens up at, R at RGB. I wish okay. it wouldn't. Um, there's probably a way to fix it. I just don't know it off the top of my head. So, you just got to make sure that you you switch over to hex. That's a fun purple color. All right, and oops, and then semicolon. Uh, I'm just gonna do the other the yellow section as well. Oh, pink. Sorry, blue, purple, pink. All right, I'm just gonna do these real quick, and then same thing. like a redder pink.
That's a good pink. Uh, okay. So those are my background colors. If I come back, hit them. All right, there we go. That's my sections with my background colors. Uh, obviously, there are some issues, but that's okay. Um, we're just working from general to specific. If it helps you, collapse your HTML while you're doing this. Right, so click on these little arrows over here on the left. Uh, and that way, you know, you can see, okay, as I'm working on my CSS, this is the most general, uh, this is the first level of my HTML. So I'm going to collapse everything so I only see this, so it's less confusing. And then I'm going to open this and be like, oh, okay, the next one is content. So I'm going to do that one. Same for here. Right? So I'm going to do content. And that'll be the next thing we do. Um, I don't care where you put content. CSS is really forgiving in terms of its structure. Um, it treats each individual declaration block as like a thing. It doesn't matter where they come in the CSS file. Uh, you could stick, you could stick, I could stick the body stuff on the bottom. It would still render correctly. It'd still show up in the browser just fine. Does that make sense to everybody? HTML is very specific. You have to write it in a very specific way. CSS doesn't matter where your declaration blocks come from as long as your declaration block itself is written correctly. All right, that will be on the final. That's why I'm harping on it. That will be a question on the final. Right. What is it? <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, you know, make sure I have it right in my mind. <laughs> uh, HTML is very specific in terms of how you write it, the structure of it. CSS is not. They're the opposite. Your declaration blocks themselves, so like these chunks of rules for CSS are specific, but the file itself is not. It doesn't matter the order that they come in. So that it means it's like on you to group things accordingly. I tend to group like the general rules at the top and the specific rules kind of in the bottom. So like all the rules for the blue section are going to show up after this blue declaration. Um, all the general rules that apply to everything on the page are going to show up after the body. Oftentimes, I make little comments, um, general rules. But if I do that, that's going to kind of mess it up. Uh, it'll mess up how the, the file is rendered. It'll break it. So we highlight it, and then we comment it out. We put little uh, special brackets around it that tell the browser to ignore it. And you do that by highlighting the entire thing and hitting Command and forward slash. Or you can type in forward slash asterisk, and then you need to close it with an asterisk forward slash. Again, bookends. Okay, and if it goes gray like this, hard to see, that means you did it correctly. So general rules, uh, blue section, and I will usually do all caps for it too because I write everything else in lowercase. Blue section, purple section. And you'll see that this makes sense uh, later on because you can end up with CSS files that are gigantic. For instance, my CSS file for the, well I have, there's a bunch of them, but the main CSS file for uh, the department page, it's only 34 kilobytes, super tiny, but, come here, uh oh, my track that's not working, what's going on, wow, okay, why are things, behaving so erratically. Sorry, my computer is like freaking out for some reason. What's going on? <laughs> I don't know what's going on with it. It's like it's scrolling itself. <laughs> Something's up with my... <coughs> there we go. I don't know what's going on. Anyway, um, I think I'm at uh, something like Two, three thousand lines. Twenty six hundred lines. So I have twenty six hundred lines of CSS in for the department website. And that's just in one one CSS file. There's five CSS files for the department website. So I'm probably close to six thousand. So anyway, you know, it helps to keep things organized. Um, all right, uh, pink section section. Okay. Cool. All right. So general rules. So content is you can consider content this content class 
the rules we're going to set up for that to be general. Um, in CSS, class is the symbol for a class is a period, and then you just write the name. Um, you could write, uh, is it a div? Yeah, it's a div. You could just write div content to div dot content, div class content, or just class content. Uh, so uh, class content, um, this is where we're going to set up that, uh, we're going to set up a width and the automatic margin. So we're going to tell the page to exist um, for the content of the page, all the text and all the words need to be kind of lined up in the middle in a nice sort of clean column. Um, so we're going to say the width of the content should be 60% of the viewport width. You write that 60 VW, viewport width. The viewport is the browser. Okay, does that make sense to everybody? I'm going. I know I went over this on Tuesday. I just want to go over it again so that everyone understands. So 60% of the viewport width, um, and then margin. Um, do you guys remember margin and padding? How we set the values for margin and padding? Or should I go over it again? Yeah. Again. Top, yep. Top, bottom, left, right. Um, or t you know, it goes. In order, if you write all four values, it goes clockwise and it starts at the top. So it goes top, right, bottom, left. Okay. Um, when we're setting values for it, there's three different ways to set values. You can set them each individually, each top, right, you know, each direction individually. So you can have one, and you just separate them by spaces. So that would be top, right, bottom, left, zeros for all. Um, you can set them using two values. Uh, and it breaks it up into vertical and horizontal categories. So the first one is the vertical, the top and bottom. The second one is the horizontal, the right and left. Okay. And then the third one would be to just do one value, and that applies it to all four sides. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay. So we're going to do zero for the top and bottom. We don't want any margin on the top and bottom. We don't want any space, extra space added. And then we're going to tell to automatically figure out, automatically figure out the left and the right. Okay? So you just type in auto. And what it'll do, so if we don't do this, it, try, it gives me my 60%, but it hugs the left, right? And here's my extra 40% of space. I want it to divide this in two and put half of it over here to move this chunk of middle stuff, or this chunk of stuff into the middle. Okay, so we tell it to how to handle the margin, zero for top and bottom, auto, auto, auto magic for right and left. And it does that. It takes the remainder and splits it evenly on the left and the right. Cool? Yeah? This is important. Everybody good? All right. Okay, so uh, you will have time to work. And I'll come help fix problems. Um, but here's a quick checklist of things to look at before you cry. Not that you would cry, Andrea. I'm just. <laughs> I have had kids in my web design class cry. Um, kids, students, you guys are adults. I shouldn't call you kids. I'm sorry. Um, the checklist, and I, I maybe I'll formalize this checklist. Um, I'll actually like make it a PDF and put it online. The checklist to go through before you scream for help. Uh, double check that you've saved your files so there's no blue dot or uh, no symbol up here in the tab. Okay, That would be the first thing to check. Second thing to check is make sure your path to, from your HTML to your CSS is correct so that your HTML page is actually loading your CSS file. All right, so this path needs to be right. Okay. Um, and how you can check, well, how you can check that in the browser, go to inspect element, and it will show up as an error right here, so like here, I'll break it, um, let's go to CSS, CSS, oops, so that's the wrong path, reload it, oh, okay, there we go, so it shows up, failed to load a resource, the URL was not found, it cannot find that style sheet, because I told it it was somewhere wrong, in the wrong place, okay? So if, it's, if your style sheet isn't loading, if your rules aren't showing up, and you have an error, click on, you know, you've got a little stop sign here, click on it and see what it tells you. That would be the third thing to do. Um, and then just check your line endings. Look for typos. Make sure you have semicolons. 
Because if I don't have a semicolon, like if I don't put a semicolon here, it breaks all the CSS that comes after it. In most cases. Okay, it didn't completely do it, break it in this case. All right. Um, yeah, okay, well, let's move on. So that gets our content over in the middle. That's great. Uh, we've got some weird spacing here. Um, this is when we're going to start debugging, start using our browser inspector tools, so the inspect element, uh, to kind of take a look. I'm going to move it over here. Um, I want to figure out why, what's causing that space. So I'm going to click through. This is my HTML. These are the rules that are applied to the uh, element that I ha currently have selected. You can see them being hi um, highlighted, highlit. I don't know how you'd say that. Highlighted um, as I mouse over them. So there's where that space is coming from. Orange is margin. Blue is the actual dimension of the element. And green is padding. That's what the colors in the, the window mean. Okay. Um, all right. So that padding is coming from there. You can see this is the user agent style sheet. It's locked. I can't actually edit it, but I can overwrite it. So for my H3, like if I wanted to, I could try it. I could click in here, margin top. Actually, let's just do, yeah, margin, margin top to zero. And it hugs the top. Okay. Um, then you could also do margin bottom to zero. Oh, that's right. It's being caused by the paragraph tag. Um, but essentially, that's, you know, you can test things out over here as well just by typing into it. Um, but you still need to come over and actually make it a rule. Um, this is going to be a general rule for everything, so I'm just going to put it here. Uh, actually, you know what? You can piggyback it on this rule. So if, um, you can string selectors together if you want to apply the same rules to them. Instead of writing a new rule here that says the exact same thing as the one for the body, you know, margin, oops. That's just redundant, and it's putting extra lines into your code, and it's more typing for you. You don't have to do that. You can just include it in that, um, that selector. I'm also going to put my P tag in there. That's the paragraph tag that has all the uh, words in it, so this tag. All right. So I just took all the margin and padding off of the paragraph tags and the H3s. Um, I did this because I want to add my own onto it. Um, all right. But, so text is really difficult to read when it's um, not spaced correctly. Um, so we're going to space some stuff. Uh, we're going to put some space around everything here so that um, there's breathing room essentially compositionally uh, all right so let's come down to let's see I'm trying to think if we want to do this generally or specifically could do it generally let's do it generally so all the sections will have the same padding we're going to do this with padding and not margin. Um, if we do it with margin, it's going to give us white space because it margin pushes other elements away from, from the, the element itself. But we want to include the background colors when we're doing this. We want the background color. When we add space, we want that background color to go with it. So we need to use padding, which sort of um, artificially inflates the dimension of the element. It's just something it does. It makes no sense why it does it, but it just doesn't. So you just learn to work with it. Um, so we're going to target all sections and padding, um, we're going to go top and bottom, we're going to do like 3% of the viewport width and 0 for the left and the right. So this, the reason we're using viewport width for units is because it's a relative unit, you know, it depends on the width of the browser, um, which is going to give us extra spacing and that spacing will change. It'll look right as it changes when the uh, uh, browser window changes. Okay. All right. Um, so that gave us that that nice spacing right there. If you want more, you just increase the uh, the dimension. Um, so maybe you could try it out here in the browser. Ten would be a lot, but maybe you want that much space. I don't know. That's up to you. 
I actually kind of like it. So maybe we'll keep it. Let's see how much it is when we make our browser really big. Yeah, that's fine. I don't mind that. Uh, the pictures follow that rules, just because some of them are too small. We haven't done anything with the pictures yet. Oh, yeah. Are they are, um, but they're the. I only targeted the um, the section, so the the overall parent, not the image. So the images themselves don't won't have any space or anything added to them until we do it. Um, it's not. It doesn't add it like it doesn't add the space to everything inside of it. It just it. You're literally grouping things, so like you're putting them in boxes, right? And so it's just the outside layer or whatever layer you happen to be targeting, layer of the group or the onion. I mean, there's there's so many different analogies, but it's essentially like it, it's like an onion, essentially, right? Like everything is wrapped or grouped um, in other things. That's why they're called containers. Like all these elements are just containers because you can put stuff in them. So all right. Um, so yeah. All right, we should do a little bit of spacing on these. Um, so let's yeah, okay. Let's specifically target them. So um, in we we set a general rule for all H threes and P's up here to be uh, padding and margin zero. We're gonna come down to our blue section. And we're going to very specifically target it. So I'm going to say div um, id about me, and then I'm going to say the h3 of that. Um, using the right facing or left facing uh, angle bracket, the little alligator mouth, um, tells the browser to look for a child inside of this container. So I'm saying there's a div that has the id about me. Look inside of it for an H3. That's what that says. All right. Um, we're going to give it some margin. Maybe margin or padding. Let's do, let's do padding. No, margin's fine. Um, we're going to go margin. Uh, top and bottom, we're going to go two. Let's go 1.5 viewport width and then zero for the left and the right. And I'm just, I'm making up numbers here. I don't know what it's going to look like, really. I'm just kind of trying to guess. Okay. I want a little bit more for the top, I think, and a little bit um, less for the bottom. Well, no, that's fine. That's fine for now. Um, I'm going to give a little bit of top space to the div itself. Div about me. I want to give it a margin top of, and just the top of, um, I don't know, 2% viewport width. Do you have to put the div in front of it? No, you don't. You could just do that. It's sometimes um, best practice, like it's uh, it's like a standard, better coding practice to put the div in front because it's more specific. Um, but you don't have to. It'll work without it. I don't always. Uh, I just did it because I did it down here. I'm going to make this a little bit more. There we go. I just wanted more space between like this chunk of paragraph. So five is pretty good. Uh, okay. What else do we need? Um, some space between the paragraph tags themselves. So div about me. Look for a p tag inside. Uh, we'll go margin. Uh, we're just gonna do margin top. Um, the reason we're doing margin top and not margin bottom is I don't want to add to the space down here. Okay. I don't want to add to this space. I want it to be consistent with what's going on up here. Um, all right. Well, what are we going to add to this? Um, hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. I don't know. Let's try 1.5. Yeah, that's not bad. 1.5 is fine. All right, um, it did actually add too much space up here at the top. So see that margin? I don't really need that margin up there at the top. I just need the margin at the top for this last one. All right? Do you guys see that? Like this margin on um, the very first about me div is unnecessary. That spacing is being handled by the, the padding that we set for the whole thing, right? So it's making, 
it's making it look like there's more space up here at the top than there is right here, which is not consistent. You know, it looks a little funky. Um, and you know, it's it's fine, sort of, but if but it's not at the same time. Um, and there are there are ways to to not uh, to get around it or to fix it. Um, so if we wanted to just apply margin to the very last about me uh, in this group, because these both have the same IDs, and I don't want to add, I can't add another ID. You can only ever have one ID. You can add classes, but you don't want to add a class just to be specific about this. Um, but what you can do is you can use uh, what's called a pseudo selector. Um, and this is, this can be kind of, um, Pseudo selectors can be kind of, they're mildly advanced, but that's only because people don't use them enough, in my opinion. Um, a pseudo selector is a way of targeting a specific element in your CSS, but then targeting like a certain one. So if you have, like, say, say we had five about me's, and I only wanted to target the third one, right, in that, in that list of five, the pseudo selector would let me target that third one. Does that make sense? Or maybe I wanted to do every other one. I wanted to change the background color of every other one. It would let me do that. Okay, and I'll show you guys how to do that. Um, so we're gonna do just the last one. So we're gonna say last child. So you just put a colon in your selector and then last child. There are um, Mozilla pseudo selectors. or pseudo classes, sorry, I call them pseudo selectors. Um, there are a lot of them, as you can see. And you just put them at the end of your selector. So I guess this is technically a pseudo class. I always mess it up. So there's lots. Um, we're gonna just do last child, which is this one. And it will just target the very last one. So it's only gonna apply margin top to the very last one on our page. So you see how that moved back up? I'll go back. All right, so see, watch, watch this, okay? Let me, go ahead, where's my target? Uh, I can't, okay. Just watch that. goes away. So there's no margin at the top of that now. There's only margin at the bottom. That gives us our space between these two groups. Does that make sense? <laughs> Everybody's looking down. I really hope you're all like taking notes and typing and not on Facebook or something. Yeah? Okay. All right. Um, so that, that lets us then can just control our spacing with our padding for our overall group, our, our overall parent, which is better. Okay. There's some fun stuff we can do with pseudo selector or pseudo classes and we'll do that on our um, pink section. I'm going to delete this stuff and we'll do some weird stuff in the pink section. So, um, Okay. <clears throat> so this section is more or less done. I think the only thing I would add to it, um, I realized we didn't do, uh, we didn't do sort of like a header thing. So I'm going to do like an H2, which is Remember, the smaller the header, the uh, smaller the number in the header, the larger the, the font will actually be. Okay, so it goes H1 to H6. Um, your H1 is your largest, your H2, small, H6, tiny. Right, it just descends down. Um, so our H2, uh, this is going to be, I don't know. Hi, I'm Alex. So I'll come back and look at it. See how it's a little bigger than that one. We're going to leave it right there for now. Um, although we will take the margin off of it. Because it just did it too. See, it's got margin on it. So we're going to say uh, blue. And so here's, um, say I want to target this H2. But I, well, no, okay, we can just, I'm going to, I'll just stay consistent. So I'm gonna, we have to go to content. Uh, div class content and then we have to say okay grab the h2 
So that's how I set rules for my h2. Or I can put an ID on my h2. I can go ID um, heading 2. Can't put numbers in, in ID names. Just text. Heading 2. But look how much I had to type for that. I don't know. I don't like, I don't like IDs that are that long. I could go h2. So that is the same be the same way as targeting like h2 so maybe I don't know it's your preference you do whichever way you want um, okay so then I want margin top zero okay moves it back up there we go all right we're going to play with the font here uh, later. But. All right, so that's all our uh, blue stuff for now. Let's do our purple stuff. Purple stuff's where it's going to get interesting because this is where we set up our images. Uh, we did content already. Now we need to set up how images are handled. Um, yeah, we can just do it in here. So. On Tuesday, I said I, we talked about doing fluid images. A fluid image is just an image inside of a container. The image itself, the image element, is set to be 100% of the, the width of the container, and the container is just set to be whatever you want it to be. Um, so I'm going to set my image. So I'm just going to target all my images. Um, it's going to be every image on, on my page right now. Uh, width 100%. And then I'm going to say class F image. Um, I have four of them. I want them to line up horizontally. So I'm going to say width 25%. This is going to make them touch edges. It's not going to put space between them. Um, although right now they're going to be on top of each other. But let's refresh so I get some to look like that, which works out. That's kind of nice. Yeah. You can put it at the top. Yeah. yeah, I actually had that dilemma before I started writing it. I was like, maybe I should put this at the top. Um, it doesn't matter where you put it. It's still going to apply to all the images on your page. If you didn't want it to apply to all the images on the page, maybe you just wanted it to be applied to the images inside of F image. You would just say um, div class F image image like that, and then that would just be those images inside there, which is useful sometimes. But for the most part, if you're doing fluid images on, on your pages, all your image elements are just going to set to be 100%. It's, it's the containers themselves that you would change. So this is 99.9% .9 of the time, this is what you would do, just this image element. All right, um, cool. Now, how do we get them to line up you know, along the left? How do we get them to stretch out horizontally? You know, these vertical pages are killing me. It's a lot to scroll through. Um, well, luckily, it used to be really difficult. There were a lot of steps we had to go through. Uh, anymore, uh, it is uh, much easier. And um, uh, there's the reason for that is that there is now support for something called Flexbox in the most current version of CSS. Uh, Flexbox is just some um, technology that lets you, or not technology, uh, it's some rules for CSS that let you very easily arrange and move stuff around. So we can align stuff up horizontally really easily. We can change the direction. We can change how they're aligned within their parents. Uh, it's super, super easy. Um, the main thing that you got to remember is you have to enable it first. So you have to set flex, um, and you set flex on the parent. So if I want to, if I want to be able to line up these images, you take it off. No, I'll be back. Okay, not a. Good thing to miss. Um, oh well, it's really this is like the worst thing to miss in the world. Um, <laughs> that's why we're recording. The we could just talk about it right now, and then when she goes back and watches the recording, she'll be like, "They were talking about me." <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah. Where was I? See, that's why it's disruptive, uh, and it's also my brain's mush today. Well, this semester. Flex, yeah. So you set flex on the parent. If I want the images to line up um, left to right, then what needs to happen is I need to put flex on whatever their parent is. Now their parent is content. 
content is a shared setting between a bunch of things on my page. I don't necessarily want flex on everything else on my page. So we're actually going to edit our HTML a little bit. Um, we're going to put all of these images inside of another div that we're just going to call like image box. Div class image box. Okay. Um, just got to make sure that you put your closing div tags in the right place and also that you indent correctly. So all of these images are inside of image box, so they should not line up on the left with image box. How you indent the stuff is highlight everything, hit command, and then right bracket, right, the right square bracket key. We'll move everything over one level. Okay? Square bracket key is right above the return. Not tab. Enter. Do not hit tab. It will. If you hit tab, oh, I guess tab worked. Uh, hold on. That's funny. I didn't think tab would work. Okay, tab will work too. I guess. Sweet. Tab used to delete it. I don't know. Maybe that's in Sublime. It deletes. I can't remember. Okay, tab works too. You can hit tab. Um, but if you want to like be able to bring it back over to the left, so I want to do 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 do. You know, the right square bracket moves it to the right, the left square bracket moves it to the left. That's command square bracket. Okay, so you hold command and then hit your square bracket keys. Cool. All right, save it. So now we've got image box. That doesn't mess up any rules that we set up for our um, images because they are just looking for the class names. Um, but now we need to set a rule for image box. Image box is going to get flex on it. Uh, so we're going to say class image box display so we're changing how the things are displayed so the setting we're changing is display we want to use flex by default if you leave display if you don't write a display in for anything it shows up as inline everything is inline okay but we're going to change it to flex all right so what's going to happen now is it's going to go from being vertical to horizontal does that make sense do you guys see that? Yeah, cool. All right, and it just lines them up by their tops. We could make them line up by their bottoms. We could make them um, a, be aligned in the middle. Uh, just depends on how you want to do it. Uh, if you want them to all be the same size, like vertical size, that's a little trickier. That's a little trickier. Um, it involves a few more steps, um, and I'm not going to worry about it right now. But Flex lets us do a bunch of interesting things. So the next thing we can do is, um, and this is still on the parent, we can justify the content. So we can set, oops, we can set um, how the content arranges itself. Uh, do I want to justify the content by the center of the parent? Do I want to justify it by the end of the parent? That would be flex end. Do I want it justified by the start of the parent? The space around it, so it moves everything in, um, evenly the space between so that your first and last elements inside the parent um, are flush with the edges of the parent of the box of the parent and but spaced evenly in the middle space between is the most common use okay um, and here we can it'll show up like right now they're touching because they're all 25 percent of this parent and there's four of them so that takes up every last pixel of space um, but if we change this dimension to be like, you know, 15% and do that, now you see they're smaller and they're still touching because I haven't told them how to justify themselves, all right? If we do justify content space between, the first element's going to stay on the left side, the last element's going to go all the way to the right, and then the in other elements are going to, the pictures are going to arrange themselves in the middle, Okay. Make sense? Yeah? I mean, if it doesn't make sense, let me know. We'll talk about it. You guys understand what happened? Flex between, it just figures out the space between. It take, It's the same thing as like margin auto, okay? It takes the, the full width of the space, it adds that up, so it has four things at 15%. That's 60% of the space of the parent, all right? And that has 40% left over, when you do space between, it takes that 40% and it divides it in three. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. It just puts it evenly between those. Um, so like if we want 
Let's make them just a little bigger to figure out how close you can get and still get like a nice margin in between. That. Um, their alignment is kind of bugging me a little. Uh, but what if you want them to be even bigger, but you can't, right? I did 50%, but they're, that's not 50% of the parent, right? Each one is 25% of the parent. Um, by default, flex will fill up to uh, the available space, right? So it will only, there's four elements, so it can only go up to 25%. There's a way to change that. It's called flex wrap. And what that does is it, instead of worrying about the um, overall dimension of the parent, it thinks about the dimension of the child, the image, okay? So it says, oh, this image has to be 50%. Well, I will make this image 50%. I will make the next image 50%. And if I've run out of room, I'll just push that third image down to the next line. And then so on. Does that make sense? How do you center? Uh, they center on, what, like this? Yeah. That's that content column that we set up here that everything shares. Uh, your HTML structure might be wrong. Um, when I get done, we'll take a look. Uh, okay, so how we do that is we set flex wrap on the parent. By default, it's no wrap. There we go. All right. Um, there's still some weirdness going on, but that's okay. For now, it's fine. All right, um, okay, we're gonna move on. So for your images, when you're, when you're setting up your images, they need to be um, similar, similarly arranged, all right? Um, I'd like to see you use flex. You don't have to. You could just have one image take up 100% of the parent. It's fine, but it, you know, yeah. Um, my images are like with my section. They're not all together. Is that fine? You do you have only like one image per section? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, because it was like project one. Sure, that's fine. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. So then I don't have to worry about like the flex wrapper. Yeah, more or less. If you're doing more than one image, I'd like to see them maybe arranged like this. And you know, flex is a good thing to know for other reasons. But um, yeah, all right. So for now, let's see. Uh, that's fine there. Oh, but how does flex work for? Uh, text. Let's do that. So let's copy this. We'll add another line of text there under our pink section. So pink section. Maybe I want two columns of text instead of them sitting on top of each other like that. Why? What just happened? I should have two. Oh, it doesn't have anything in it. There we go. All right. Okay. I want these two to be side by side. So how we would do that in our pink section is um, find these two need to be, uh, where are we? Blue, pink. All right. Um, this content, these about me's need to be grouped to get, um, they need to be inside of a container in order to have flex applied to them. So I'm going to move them over, give myself another line and then make a parent. So um, we'll call it text box. All right, so did class text box. Come down here, text box, display flex. Um, we need to then give a width to the about me's. So I want to be specific about which about me's I'm giving this width to. So text box um, um, ID about me. I'm going to get just a little more specific. Let's say div. This is just so that I know that it absolutely will work. Um, sometimes you'll get you'll get errors where some browsers won't render it correctly if you're not being very specific. Um, so we're going to say width. 50%. Flex will not work on a child if that child doesn't have a width declared. Okay, that's why I'm declaring a width for these for this text. Um, I'm going to make it a little bit smaller actually, so we have a margin. All right, that's all I need for that flex. And then let's do our justify space between. Okay, so this should line them up. Now we got some funkiness, and I don't know why.
Oh, because this one has margin on it. Oh, the last child, right, right. Um, okay, so we can get rid of that last child by being very specific again. Text box div about me last child Chile last Chile last ever Chile um, margin sorry zero there we go now I wrote this out so specifically so that it would target just the about me inside of text box and not the other about me's that we used all right uh, okay that lines it up like that which is fun um, but we should probably stick some margin let's go margin bottom uh, five push that image down a little all right um, so we set an image we set an F image up here at with 50% for the purple section but I also have an F image in my pink section and that I don't that F image doesn't this image doesn't necessarily need to be 50% it could be 100% and be fine because it's one image right so you would just reset the width for that container specifically like we did for this so we would say section uh, ID pink uh, div class content and then uh, div F image class con or class F image and say width 100% and that will make that width to be 100%. Okay. When you need to retarget something or, or put new rules uh, on um, a class or a container that you've already set rules for, just be specific about where it is. That's a path. It's just like the, the paths we talked about on Tuesday, you know, trying to link your, your style sheet to your HTML, the relative path. All right, um, this is a, an absolute path in the file. Uh, this is a relative path because it's just looking for something that has class text box. It doesn't care what what parent it's in at all. This is looking at, this is saying you have to follow this chain down to find this thing to apply that rule. Does that make sense? Very specific steps. Yeah? Okay. If it doesn't make sense, please say so. Maybe on that one. On the, like this? Why, why this works? Well, I just like would not, I don't think I would be able to figure that myself. Like, it's just, I'm just looking at my HTML and going, oh, what's that, what's that path? You know, what's the, the structure here? So section pink div class content, or sorry, we're looking at textbook. So I'm, I'm looking for div class textbook text box and then I'm saying um, div ID about me and then I'm looking for the last child which is just the last child in that in that list right it'll always grab that last one what if you have more than two children it'll like, still grab the last one. Oh. but if I want oh yeah so if you want like the third one yeah oh okay here we can do something fun all right so let's do another section real quick um, we'll call this one um, I don't know pink Orange, section orange, um, all right, section orange, and then we'll do div content. Okay, so maybe we have, um, let's do like div, div ID box uh, times 10. All right, so I'm gonna make 10 empty boxes inside of uh, orange. This is fun, this is actually like, now I'm excited. Um, Cause this is gonna be, I know it's dumb. Uh, all right, so um, we're gonna say orange uh, background color orange. Be orange, please. All right, uh, that's fine. Content is taken care of. Um, then we're gonna say uh, box. Um, this is the only box I have right now, so it's, I'm okay being kind of general with my rule. But if I have something else that has box, you'll need to be specific. Um, so div ID box. So I'm going to give it a width. Um, we're actually also going to give it. Ooh, you know what? Let me let me put these in a group really quick. Um, div 
box o boxes. <coughs> that is a terrible ID name. Don't write your ID names like that because it's confusing, but it's funny. So I'm going to do it. Box o boxes. Hey, nobody's laughing. You guys are all really bored. All right, um, width. So let's make our width. Um, 33%. No, uh, that's not. Oh, you know, we'll go 25%. That's easier to make flush. Um, our width is going to be 25%. Um, our height. And this we're actually setting a height for. So this is where the math gets a little weird. Um, I want a square. And to get a square, I have to set it, the height dimension to be the exact same dimension as the width. But what I'm setting it to be is the height, the width to be 25% of 60% of the viewport width. Does that make sense to everybody? Or should I just write this and not explain it? <laughs> what? Carrie, what'd you say? So you can explain it. Okay, all right. Um, so if our, if our page, so we've got 100%, there's 100% of viewport width right here, okay? Our content is taking up 60% of the viewport width. I want, and then my boxes are going to take up 25% of this, this middle space, okay? So I have to figure out what, I have 60% of the viewport width, and I have to figure out what 25% of that 60 is. Because I need to express it in viewport width and not percentages. If I do it in percentages, it won't, it won't work correctly. So whatever 25% of 60 is, you want, to, you want to figure that out real quick? So 60, was it times 0.25? Yeah, 15. Oh yeah, that makes sense, duh. So 15% of viewport width should give me a square. So 25% of the 60% of the 100. <laughs> Does that follow? Does that kind of track what I did there? It was kind of confusing. Okay. Um, I can do the whiteboard real quick. This is really useful when you're trying to figure out uh, I'm sorry. You're gonna get some time to work here in just a minute. All right, so if we have hey, this can work as a ruler. All right, if we have... All right, this is roughly. Let me make like a laser cut template or something. Maybe I will. Maybe I will do that. It's awkward. All right, so this is our browser, right? And then our content is going to take up 60% of that. So this is 20%, and this is 20%. Uh, I write my zeros with a slash, um, in case you're wondering. And then this is 60%. Okay. I want my boxes that I'm going to make up here are going to show up, are going to take up 20%. So they're going to take up, and they're going to be like, like that. But I don't want them to be rectangles. I want them to be squares. So I want I want this vertical dimension, the height, this dimension here needs to be the exact same as that dimension. Okay? So dimension it's A it's B, dimension A equals dimension B. They need to be the same. I know what A is. A is really easy to set because it's 25% of the 60. Okay? And this 60 is expressed not as 60%, but rather 60 viewport width. There's a difference. Okay. The viewport width is, you know, a percentage of the browser window. All right, so this inside space of the browser, you know, browser, I say window because you've also got like a toolbar on your browser. Uh, you've got a scroll bar, which actually matters in terms of pixels and boxes or whatever over there. Um, so the browser window, so it's figuring out, you know, this 
internal space. This is viewport width. So 100 viewport width. So 60 viewport width, 20, 20 viewport width. It's 60% of the viewport width is how you would read that. Um, when I'm doing 25% of that, I don't write 25 of the viewport width because it's not 25% of the viewport width. Okay. I need to figure out what percentage of the viewport width it is, though, so that I can give that uh, dimension to the height in order to get my squares. And that's why I did 25% of the 60, which is 15. So 15 viewport width is the same as 25% of 60% of the viewport width. Does that make sense? That makes sense. Yes. The weirdness is in the units, right? The reason why we're switching back and forth is in CSS, percentages are always um, the percent of the parent, okay? It's not, it's not an objective unit of measurement. It's a relative unit of measurement, all right? So it's like 100% it's like of 10 is more than 100% of 2. That's how you should think about it. Does that make sense? They're both 100%, but one is actually more than another, right? It's like the old joke, what weighs more, a ton of bricks or a ton of feathers? They weigh the same, they're a ton, right? Okay. The volume will be different, but they weigh the same. The density is very different, but there are similarities in the units, okay? Just remember the percentage is always refers to the parent, okay? It's always a percentage of the parent, so that immediate parent, okay? Viewport width is very specific. It's saying be a percentage of the viewport width. I don't care what your parent is. I don't care who your parents are, that sort of thing. Does that make sense? Yeah? Okay. <coughs> So we figure that out that A is 25% of the 60 viewport width. Oops. Okay, and then B is 15 viewport width. Cool. Because this is the same thing. 25% of 60 is 15. 15. We're just it's our numbers. Is that algebra? I can't remember. It's been a long time for me. I use it all the time, but I think it's the same. You know, I forget what it applies to. I've had too much math over the years. Cool? Yeah. yeah? Somewhat? Mary? Yeah? Okay. All right. I know my lectures are riveting and everyone wants to stay completely awake for them, but it matters. Um, okay. Yeah. All right. I made a mess with those markers. Let's go back on. All right. Let's put this into play and then we can do some more with the uh, pseudo classes. Back into the dark, the nice warm dark room. It's putting me to sleep, that's why I'm talking about it. If this class had been yesterday, I probably would have been asleep. I got less than four hours of sleep yesterday. By the time I got to my afternoon class, I'd been up for 12 hours already. It was pleasant. As it shows up. Ah, oh, it's a browser. Or projector. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we've done that, we've saved it, we go over, and we should get squares. We got nothing. Oh, ha, we got nothing because I didn't give them colors. Uh, so now we gotta say background colors. So they're there, they just don't have colors. The, the boxes are there. They're there. They're just, oh, they're, oh right, because I don't have flex wrap also turned on. So there's a few things we didn't do. Uh, flex wrap, wrap, warp. Engage. No Star Trek fans, huh? Okay, there we go. So there are my boxes. They're invisible. We've got our boxes, though. Do, 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 do. Maybe we'll do 12 because I'm doing two or doing four across. That'll give us three rows. Yeah, cool. Boxes. Now we just got to give them a background color. Um, 
I don't know. Well, we're not. You can also express colors, uh, hex colors, um, certain hex colors uh, in just three uh, characters. Uh, what it does is it, it assumes that the next three that follow are the exact same. So it just doubles it. So this is uh, white is F, 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 F. Uh, you can just shorthand it as F, F, F. Black is 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. I think that was 6. Um, shorthand it is just 0, 0, 0, et cetera. Um, you want to just make up colors, you can just put in three things, and then it'll just double it, and you'll see what that shows up as. All right, there's our white ones. But hey, how do we know this is you know 12 separate squares? We don't. Well, how do we color them differently? Well, we could come in and give each one you know a different class, and then tediously come over and set new CSS rules for that. Or we can use a, uh, the pseudo class and just say um, doo -doo 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 -doo, uh, box nth child. Now this nth child, uh, if you remember from a math class, n uh, nth is just a variable. All right, it's a placeholder. Um, it's taking the position you're starting from and then adding whatever onto it. So nth child, um, we're going to start uh, in one place, and then we're just going to add a number to it um, to get like every other or every third or every fourth. All right. Um, I don't always remember all of the different. Uh, settings for nth child. So I always come back to the Mozilla reference, the CSS reference, and check nth child. What's nth child? So 1 plus n would be the same as every element. 2n plus 0, or simply 2n, is evens. 2n plus 1 is odds. 3n plus 4 would be 4, 7, 10. So it adds 3. It starts at 4 and then adds 3. Right? So you, it's just it's just math. So you just come in here and try to figure it out. Uh, you can just do shorthand odd and even, which is always good too. So we're going to do nth child odds. And then we're going to set the odd colors to be. And you just set the color, you just set the rule that you want to be different. Because it's going gonna, it's gonna to keep the height and width. You don't have to reset that. All right? You're just setting what's different about it. So we're setting the background color is going to be different. All right. So this is going to give us black and white checkerboard. Oh, right. Nope. That was wrong because I did odds. Um, what is it? I want? Let's start. Is it, let's do evens. Is that going to mess? No, that just changes it. Uh, 2n plus 0. That's the same. 1. Ah. 2. Shoot. Can't remember now. Ha, ah, that's wrong. Anybody know off the top of their head? This stuff always messes me up. Didn't you have to do an odd number of columns here to alternate? Right. Yeah. Color. Yeah, you would. But no, there's a way to do it without because you did one, two, three, four. All right, black, white, black, white, black. Yeah, you're right. You do have to have an odd number of columns. Okay, let's do an odd number of columns. Um, I have 12. We're going to do five columns. It's going to change our math a little bit. Um, so 20% and then 20% uh, of 60 is 12. 60, you know. Is it 12? I don't know why I did that. Point. Ah. Yeah, 12. I should trust my head. Okay. And our box is a little smaller. There we go. Thanks, Jack. Um, yeah, so now we have a checkerboard, which is fun. Um, other things you can do with this. Um, so that's a, those are pseudo classes. There are also uh, pseudo states. Um, and you, those are denoted by uh, things called like hover, which is when the mouse hovers over something. You can set a new rule when the mouse hovers over. So if we want a box hover. Uh, if we want a different background color when we hover over it. So box colon hover. And then 
pick a color. <coughs> oh, not RGB. I mean, RGB would work. It's fine. That's probably a little too close. Now, when we hover over, we get different colors. Okay. Um, this is not necessarily something you need to do. It's something I wanted to show you because it's fun. Uh, there's other things that are more fun that I'd love to show you, but I want to give you guys at least a little bit of time to work today. Um, if you want to do something like this or incorporate the uh, nth child pseudo class into your page somehow, like maybe you've got an array of images that look like this, I, you know that's totally great. That'd be awesome. Um, but again, it's up to you. Okay. Uh, things you can do instead of like background color, you can set background image. So maybe um, uh, we could do something like uh, background color for hover, background color none, background actually no background image will overwrite it, so I don't need to do that. So when I hover over it, it's going to do a background image, image, and it's just going to fit it in the box. Um, so you have to give it a uh, URL, a path um, in here. So this path is needs to go like where the image lives. This path is going to be different than the index path because the CSS file is in a different location than index. The CSS file is inside of a folder called CSS. So we have to go. We have to tell it to go outside of the folder, and then go inside of the images folder and look for an image. How we do that? is we say dot dot, well, in quotes, dot dot tells it to go out of the folder it's in. All right, so we're going from style out into the responsive website directory, and go inside images, and then load to.jpg. All right. So now it's putting that image in when we hover, but it's making it full screen. So let's go um, background size Oops. Uh, contain I think contains the one I want yeah there we go maybe let's try cover I always have to look these up to play around with them that covers better there we go so now we got an image for our hover state what's the difference between contain and cover? contain um, Fits the, it doesn't break the proportions, it fits width and height, um, and then just repeats the image. So I didn't have a square image, so it was you know vertical and then it was repeating it again. Whereas um, cover just fills the space of the, the element. And it doesn't matter about cropping, it doesn't care about the image. Um, and then with cover, you can um, move where your center point of your image is to, like you can move how it's uh, arranged in that frame. Just like in InDesign, when you can move an image around inside of an image frame, it's the same way, same thing. You just change your background image position or background position. So, okay, um, go ahead and work on your own. Um, add your CSS. You need five sections that are delineated somehow. Uh, I don't care what colors you use. Um, you can go black, white. You can do a gradient of grays. It's up to you. Um, I just don't want five sections that look like they're one section, right? So you need something other than just the default white. Okay, um, spacing is going to be important, so definitely work on your spacing. That's that margin and padding that we were adding. Uh, if you have more than one image, I want you to have flex on them. Your images do need to be responsive. They need to be fluid. So if I drag the browser window down, your image should change size automatically. That does it by that way that we set it up inside the box. Okay. Um, if you have some call, I'd like to. See, if you do have a lot of text, I'd like to see it two columns like this. I want you to play with flex a little bit. And if you want to, for you know giggles, you can play around with that last image stuff. Or last child stuff. So 